Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah. Run it up. Good morning and welcome to the official, unofficial, official show of your Sacramento Kings. That's right, Eddie. We've adopted them. They are ours. And Chandler's back from the desert. Anything that you can share? Not much. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I kind of figured that's where we were headed. That is Shams. That is Eddie. You know who this is. My name is Michelle. And we're going to talk some hoops right now. And um, one game was good. And one game was not. But we'll start with the good one. How about the Warriors and the Kings? Oh, my goodness. This place is out of control. Kings with game two. One of us called it. They lead that series 2-0. Uh, 25 points off of turnovers. That ain't right. Bench points. They also crushed by 15. Points in the paint. Yep, you guessed it. Also dominated. And then you had Draymond doing Draymond things. Ejected for stomping. I haven't said that ever, really. On Sabonis' chest. After the leg was grabbed, um, Sabonis got a T. Draymond got a flagrant too. There's a lot of controversy around it. Where do you stand on this one? Do you deserve it? Well, here's the thing. I hate that this has now become the story of the game because the Kings have looked like the better team, and this is what everyone wants to talk about today. And so here we go. But yes, it, <laughs> I think he should have been ejected. Listen, I think it was reactive. I think Sabonis kind of started it with the, with the ankle grab. But did but he grab it? it? In no way, shape, or form can you stone cold Steve Austin stomp <laughs> him in the chest. And then I think the worst thing he did was was that and hype up the crowd and kind of turn them up as as the referees are reviewing this play, right. whether determined to kick you out or not, you're kind of escalating the whole situation, getting into it with fans, talking trash to everybody. It, it just wasn't a good look. And as a as an older vet player, you can't put yourself in these situations <laughs> and take yourself out of the games. I give him credit for the little hop afterwards as if it was <laughs> he was trying to get past him. Good lord. But yeah, you, you gotta eject you gotta eject him in a situation. This is not a, a normal play and, and and it's 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 dirty. Yeah, I said it as soon as it happened. He's getting kicked out. Yeah. There's just no two ways about it. He jumped and stomped on the guy. I think they both knew exactly what they were doing. I think they both <laughs> were trying to take shots at each other. This happened in game one as well. There's an infamous play where they fall over. Draymond falls on him. Demonis kind of pulled him down, and, and they stayed there for a minute. I think Steph went up, hit a three. It, it, they've been going at each other all series. He has to get kicked out. There's just no – you can't. You can't do that in the middle of the game. The whole arena sees. They review it for ten minutes oh, God, and then still play basketball. There's no way you can do that. I don't think he should be suspended for the next game. He already lost the game. That's fine. But uh, it's Draymond Green and the NBA. And this has been going on for so long that I don't think you can count it out. So we'll see what happens. I mean, how much of it is it's Draymond? I mean, that's that brings you extra attention. I mean, the leg was clearly grabbed, and then the stomp looked but excessive for sure. But was it grabbed? Because I feel like it's tangled up in his... Like, I don't actually see his hand go... It feels like it's here, and his arm sort of tangles. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I trust me, I've watched this so many times now. But it's... They said it's he was weird. going to protect his face, which right. I didn't believe. But I think he squeezed his arms when he saw his foot. I think it's a little bit of both. The issue, the issue is there's so much question it's here. Yeah. I mean, like, there's, it's not just black and white. Like, did he grab it? Was he trying to protect himself? Was he actually trying to just jump over and then his full body weight landed <laughs> on his chest? That's why I don't you, think he gets suspended for the next game, because there is yeah. some doubt. I, I think you can, you, whether it was intentional or not, it was grabbed. I mean, the Draymond stomp clearly looked like there's a little bit, and, and like the referees <laughs> supposedly told Draymond after the ejection, you got ejected because you stomped too hard. And I think little spice. That, that, that was obvious. It was a little bit more oomph to that stomp that, that he had on Sabonis. But, yeah, I mean, I think the NBA is going to review it all day. Um, we'll see if he's suspended or not. There are yeah. levels to a chest stomp. Yeah, we're, deba we're debating physics a little bit here, but he definitely tried to pull his leg out. And then he definitely looked down and gave him a little bit on the way out. I don't think there's any debate there. He can deny it all he wants, but when he look down and step on the man's chest and then jump off it. So, you know, I hope he doesn't get suspended for a game. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Just in all, like... By the way, do we think he... So you don't. You hope he does it, but do you think he does? I, I don't... I don't know. It's straight on. And the NBA has a long track record. They've suspended him in the finals. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it's not like... And that was a whole different situation, obviously, with the technicals and the, and the flagrant points and all that stuff. But look, it, it's not beyond them to suspend him. He's he's building quite the track record. He's kicking guys in it for years and all this stuff. It's uh, it, it's tough. I hope he doesn't, just from a competitive standpoint. But if he does, there's nobody to blame but himself. Yeah, he he's not going to get suspended, and it's because 
there is some doubt. And also, they are down 2-0, and and they want this series to go as long as possible. And this series is damn near over. All Sacramento has to do is win one game on the road. And Oh, I know. And it is it is a lock. So, listen, I think, again, because of some of the question, what, it was reactive, and it, it is because it's Draymond Green and the past he has and how he was instigating the crowd, and I think that was escalating everybody. If he were to come back, God knows what would have happened. So, I, a suspension, no. The ejection was enough. They've played it out to where he's getting x-rays on his ankle now, too. I mean. Guess, which is brilliant. They're playing their cards well, I, right. I, I will say, if Sabonis got hurt, Sabon, uh, Draymond Green definitely would have been yeah. suspended. What, yeah. if, if what, that, if, what if Draymond Green's Achilles tour there? For, Does I mean, it, Sabonis it could, it could, then get suspended? I don't what? think Sabonis gets suspended. But I, I will off say. yank? It wasn't a yank. How do, <laughs> this is like that stupid dress thing all over again. Like, yeah, I see yeah. something, you see something, <laughs> and it's like they're not the yeah. same. Like that's he didn't yank it. But yeah. that's, so 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 that's, if Draymond like <laughs> you stop. If, if if Draymond broke Sabonis' ribs or or had a sternum injury, I'm trying to you know. I'm, I'm sorry. Try, I'm trying to break down yeah. uh, medicals. It, he w- he would have definitely been suspended, but he under Sabonis had testing post game. Everything was clear. No no doesn't believe to have a rib injury, no sternum injury, no lung injury. He's supposed to be fine for game three. So. Yeah, I mean, no injury for, for Sabonis. I, I would assume Draymond Green, you know, will be in a good spot for game three. I mean, the good news is we have some sound here, so we, I can get out of this for one second. Uh, because immediately the PR campaign for Draymond Green started uh, as soon as people started talking. Here's Clay. What are you going to do when someone grabs your foot when you're running full speed? Like, that's a dirty, I just fully grabs your foot and yanks on you. That's not cool, man. I'm not saying. What Draymond did was right, but like, can't just grab somebody's foot when they're taking off in a full sprint. That's not, that's not cool. I don't do that. Like we, are, I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> First of all, Shams, I think you need that jacket. It was mm. a very, it was a very good outfit. Um, at the end of the day, what's going to come into question once again is Draymond and his emotions, which for good or bad, they are always present. And if you're a teammate of his, you have to defend him all the time, but are you irritated at the idea that he cannot control his emotions? Yeah, but again, you, you, this is who he is. This is who he always Ooh. has been, right? So this is what makes him him. This is what makes him valuable. And this is also what makes him a little bit of a liability because now there's in doubt. And you take Draymond Green and you do suspend him for the next game, he is valuable. He's not going to score a lot of points, but everyone knows what he adds to this team defensively, offensively, playmaking. So it's a huge hole that if he does get suspended, where it's kind of like Dylan Brooks and his role in Memphis, It's I get it. It's all the antics, the talking. It's exciting. But when you now get to a level where you're taking yourself off the court, now it's an issue, and now your team's going to miss you when they need you the most. And and. Clay saying a full sprint is a little much. It's a little He's much. not sprinting. He hasn't even began to move yet. So again, it's all it's all opinionated. So I don't I don't think he should get suspended though. It's brilliant. I mean, they need Draymond Green. End of the day, I think it's you, the way you see Clay defend him, and that they know that, and and they they're behind him in this situation. If you're on that side of the fence, you absolutely feel like he grabbed his foot, and he reacted accordingly. They're, they're saying as much. Draymond has said as much. They they've all said this. The, the, the quiet part that you got to say out loud is Draymond had a great game. Draymond was, was doing very well on the offensive end. And the way they need to attack, the way the Kings are trapping Steph in every corner of the court, they need Draymond for that. They need him to split double teams. They need him to catch on the weak, on the short roll and find guys roll in the corner or, 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 or cutting to the basket. They need him for that stuff. They were on a nice little run when Draymond got ejected and it swung the game. So they need him. Do they hate his antics? I'm sure privately they do. Oh. We, I, we, we get sick of each other. Like everybody who hangs around enough, each other long enough, they'll get sick of each other. But they need him on the court. And playing he's basketball. so extra. <clears throat> he's so extra. It's all the time. It's always him. And I feel like that's why every talk show today is going to be talking about this over and over again. Not the fact that the defending champs are in the whole two games and nothing. The, First the, time in the history it's like, of it's this crazy. era. Yeah. Really? First time in the history it's of this strange. Steph Curry era. It was since 07, I think. Wow. Well, I'm just saying America's team is showing everyone why they are America's team right now. Look, he's got a player option, which he's probably going to decline because he wants the big deal. Um, Is he a warrior next year? I don't think so. I I think he's a Laker. I think he's a Mav. I think he's going to Miami. I think he's not a warrior. And I think now with Klay Thompson, he's also expecting a max extension. So they're going to have some decisions to be made. They already gave Jordan Poole the bag. 
and he didn't show up last night either. He, they need a lot more from him. He played 15 minutes. Uh, so they have some issues on their hand, but right now their, their first concern is protect home court, win game three, win game four, and then be the champs, go on the road, and kind of get this, this series back in your favor. But it's going to be tough for them. Sacramento has proved that they are a better team so far. They're tough. Their bench has been better. Uh, this game wouldn't even have been close last night if they just made their free throws. Mm. The Warriors cannot defend without fouling. So it, it's a lot of things are going in Sacramento's way, and that place is so electric, and it is so much fun. I wish I was there. King shot 23% from three last night. It, you, you could argue they didn't have a great game. De'Aaron Fox was so-so into the very end of this game, and he, Andrew Wiggins gave him hell, and he had to figure out how to deal with that. So the Kings have another gear. The Kings have one of those games where they're scorching from three and they knock down 23s or something or other. They've shot better on the road this in this season, so, like, they're comfortable going on the road. It's it, it's getting dark out there for the Warriors, and they, <laughs> they, they have to step it up. And like Chandler said, a lot of uncertainty in the summer. A lot, a lot of people think Draymond is trying to get out. A lot of people think Draymond's been out of there since the moment that punch happened. And then you got That's Clay, fair. and then you got the, the Jordan Poole thing. And those are one of those things in the locker room. And you, you can attest to this. You, you know when a guy gets a big deal. You, you, you feel that. You have, there's energy about that. And so when you have a guy get a big deal, and essentially gets benched <laughs> in the second half of a must-win game for Moses Moody, it's... it's it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to watch from afar. And this is a team that I think is very fragile at the moment. And if this is how it ends, it's 90 minutes down the I-80 to the, to the local team that was your junior for a decade, you really can't script that. Who would have thunk it that we'd be here? And you mentioned it's a historic in the hole, two games to none. How much trouble are they in, really? I mean, they get to go home, which at least is a place where they've been quite good this season. Yeah, I mean, it's it's every, anytime teams play at home, their role players play better. And I, I know being at game one, the, the vibe from the Warriors, they were so confident after the game. You would have thought they won game one. Yeah. So they, they had a, it's probably that reigning defending champion level of confidence that they had. And one big thing was, <clears throat> we know we're not going to let Malik Monk go off the way he did <laughs> in game one. And he didn't have the game that he did in game one. But he was pretty darn effective in game two. 18 points. Um, he made so many big shots in the second quarter when it looked like the Warriors were gonna get get a grip of this game, take take hold of this game and keep it, and, and, and keep and potentially win. Um, and and he made big plays just like he did the other night in the third quarter when it looked like the Warriors were gonna take control of the game. So we've seen twice now in back-to-back -back games where it looked like the Warriors had control of the game. We're gonna we're gonna end up winning the game. And Sacramento <laughs> comes back hard. By the way, that guy's behind Bob Myers. So that guy is cool. <laughs> what, what? That's a lot. That's excessive. I mean, I, I'm all about heckling and doing it, but that's a lot. And of no E40. Was that the game last? No, no E40 at the game last night. He'll be at Game Three. I hope he, he will be at Game Three. Warriors. <laughs> I hope he announces the lineup. At the well, Warriors which, game. Oh, he, I mean, he might very well. They, he really it, might. they have to do a lot right he now really to might. sort of get everyone excited again. This is this is not the greatest place to be, but. Nobody really gave this Kings team a chance, and nope. it was all chalked up to experience, and they don't have any defense, and this and that, even though they're the higher seed. But are they proving people wrong? And this is not just a lucky streak, right? They're yeah. doing something. Yeah, and I didn't watch them much, I'll be honest with you. They weren't on national TV a lot. This team is solid, and they're great, and they're young, and they defend, and Davion Mitchell was huge last night. Malik Monk is an actual NBA player <laughs> who is an absolute bucket. Fox's mid-range is unbelievable. Sabonis's toughness down low is kind of hurt her knocking down shots. Harrison Barnes doing everything offensively for him. They have a very good balanced attack and they are athletic and they defend. And and I, I think they are the better team. And I do think they're gonna go to Golden State and I think they get one of them. But do not let them sweep the Warriors either. If they sweep what? the Golden State why Warriors, not? then then we got real issues to talk about next week. But wait, why uh, not? Why can't they sweep them? That's a great story. I just story. think that is the end of this era. If the, if, if if they're swept, that is you know no extension for Clay. Draymond Green's opting out, and then you're going to see a whole different look of the Warriors next. I year. mean, eras do end. In fairness. And to the Sacramento Kings this year, it's, 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 it's on that path. Kind of amazing. Yeah. Uh, I love you mentioned Davion Mitchell. He averaged five points a game this season, scored 14 last night. <laughs> he was disruptive defensively, had two steals in limited minutes. Alex Lynn, in his limited time on the court, oh my goodness. a revelation. He, yeah. he was two for two, two big dunks yesterday. Um, Mike Brown must have been saving him. Mike they're, Brown must have been saving him. They're right? defending, and that's the perfect like, name, Mike who? Brown. They're defending. They're playing with so much energy on both ends of the court. They're all in Steph's grill as much as they can. They're selling out on everything. They're defending in a way I didn't think they could defend. Look at that. And, and that, to me, that's winning them the series. And when you hold the Warriors to 106 points, 
you have a chance. You're the best offense in the league. They've shown that in this series. They've continued to be. And they didn't even shoot that great last night. How much fun is Mike Brown having? Can we just for one second? Well, I was at the game uh, the other night in game one. He's so animated on the <laughs> sideline. He's just yelling. He's yapping. He's cussing out his own yes. players. And um, him and Malik Monk had a good back and forth in game <laughs> one where Malik's like, man, get out, get out. Like, basically, like, get out of here. And Mike Brown just keeps yelling at him. And, then, <laughs> like, he's so animated. You can see how much he cares about, about these players and, and the culture that he's instilled there. So... Shout out Mike Brown. I love it. Coach of the Year gets announced, I think, later this week. I think we, we all probably know where this is. And he knows the Warriors, right? Oh, he yeah. knows their yeah. players. That's the other, he knows that's the other their thing. personnel. He knows their systems. And a lot of teams, they change the sets. They'll, they'll change the name calls. But for the most part, it's, it's the same plays. It's the same offense. It's the same actions. And Mike Brown knows them. Harrison Barnes still remembers them from when he was <laughs> yeah. a Warrior. So right. they have two guys that are familiar with this situation, that know the offense, that know how Clay and Steph move without the ball. And they're showing that defensively, and they're locking in, they're taking away their actions. And, and again, I've said it three times now, they look like the better team offensively and defensively, which is probably why they're up 2-0. No, I think Mike Brown wasn't just an assistant for the Warriors. At points, he was in charge of the substitution patterns. He was mm -hmm. in charge of the defense. So this is a guy that had his fingerprints all over the Warriors over the last several years. I love it, too, because it's not a hate thing. There's like a genuine love between yeah. Mike Brown yeah. and the So it's... I mean, I'm not going to speak with the players, but at least <laughs> amongst the coaches, no, everything's They, they all advocated. They, like right? uh, Several of those Warriors players advocated for him with the Kings when Vivek Ranadive did, did his research. There were guys that advocated for Mike Brown, for sure. Makes me happy. There was another game, uh, the first game of the night. Just, ah, it just doesn't have the zhuzh that we want this one to have, but Sixers overcame a pretty slow start, um, beat the Nets 96-84. They, they also up two games in this one. Tyrese Maxey with 33 points. Joel Embiid finished with 20 19 and 7. And look, this game for a while there, I thought, oh, Brooklyn's in this one, you guys. And then they just weren't. Are the Sixers the best team in the East? Uh, well, I mean, I thought it was Milwaukee all year long, and then they go and lose. Mm. You don't know the, the health of Giannis, but the, the Sixers look really good, and they're just, they're too much. The, the Nets don't have enough. They're taking great games from Cam Johnson uh, just to stay in, the, in in games like this, and, and James Harden didn't even really play well yesterday, and Tyrese Maxey came to the rescue. Mm. They're throwing the whole kitchen sink at Joel every time he touches the ball, so I, I, I was halfway joking around with Spencer Dinwiddie last week, but they don't really have a chance, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if Brooklyn gets swept. <laughs> Halfway joking. Yeah, they, they they tried everything they could. And look, this is probably a really good outcome for the Nets. It was the rare both teams don't score 100 points right? game, but but the Nets couldn't get to 85. So like, this is their issue. They don't have enough dynamic offensive players. They have guys who make sense as role players. They have guys who ideally should be able to catch and shoot threes and, and three and D guys, and they've littered their roster with this. But in the playoffs, you need dynamic, multifaceted offensive players, and they just don't have that. Our friend of the show, Spencer Dinwiddie, <laughs> he's not exactly leading the charge here as their one ball handler on that team so far. They're not playing Cam Thomas. They're, they're kind of stuck in that sense, and they're asking him to do a lot more than I think he can do at this point. And they're doing everything they can. When they were selling out on Joel Embiid like, in the way that they were, even when they went small and they were sending two or three guys at him, that's what the that worked for the Sixers. They were able to swing the ball around the horn. They actually didn't shoot that great from three, but they did it just enough to win this game, and they had enough guys who could do that. Tyrese Maxey had a great game. Joel stepped up late. This matchup's just too much for the Nets. I have a question about James Harden. Yes, they did get the win, but anybody who's watched James Harden in the playoffs for many, many years, there's a certain expectation of a fizzle out at some point. And last night was not great. Yep. So despite getting the win, is there a part of you, if you're a Philly fan, if you're any of these people that have been watching that thinks, oh, God, here we go again. He's about to James Harden. To me, yeah. And, and game one, he played well. He had seven threes. He had 13 assists. Last night, he struggled a little bit. And, and kind of all year long going into it, well, who was going to be the number two option? Was it Tyrese? Was it James? But when you're guarding their best player, Joel Embiid, like they are, someone's got to go off. And, and I look to James Harden. He's experienced. He's a vet. He's led the NBA in scoring. He's been there before. And he hears all the murmurs about how he doesn't play well in the playoffs and how he needs to step up. He kind of laid an egg here, but they still got the win. He needs to take over one of these games. He needs to show them that he can be that second option. He can be that number one option when they do take the ball out of Joel's hands. And, look, it's going to be miserable for Joel. He's literally getting double teamed wherever he touches the ball. And that's going to leave a lot of open space for Tyrese Maxey and James Harden. And they got to find ways to be efficient and to kind of score the ball to get that load off Joel. But am I worried? Not necessarily this series because, again, I think they're going to beat them in four or five. But 
yeah, come next round against, you know, the Celtics is who I think they're going to play. He's got to be big, and he's got to, like Charles Barkley said last night, they didn't pay him to, to lead their team in assists. They paid him to be that second scorer and to go off when, when Joel is getting guarded like this. So it is a little bit concerning, but there's still time, and, and they're going to beat the Nets with or without James Harden this series. Eight points in a game where they're selling out on Joel Embiid in the way they are. He got g- good shots. He only took 13 shots last night. Uh, there were times this season where he looked like he had bursts. He looked like he was back. He scored 21 points a game. He led the league in assists. Mm-hmm. And it, so it was like, yo, they're getting the best version of James Harden you can hope for right now. In the last month, I think he was dealing with an Achilles injury. He missed some time. I, I watch him, and I wonder if he's healthy. I, I'm not exactly sure. I know he hit, what was it, six threes the other night. But he's not exactly driving with the same intensity he was before. And, and they're going to need him to be that. So the best thing for them is to wrap this up soon. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, you know, the, the Celtics have to extend a little bit. And they get them those guys some rest, but yeah, he doesn't look right to me. I'm not a doctor, I'm not the trainer, but he he doesn't look like what he was. And and he's doing a lot of kicking the ball up to Tyrese Maxey. He's doing a lot of just coming off the ball kind of quick, and he's playing a little conservative in my mind. And and I think maybe he's dealing with something. Well, thankfully they have Tyrese Maxey, and the way he played last night, 33 points, six three pointers. Everyone talks about James Harden's free agency this summer, but Tyrese Maxey is a guy that's going to be going into third year rookie extension season and when you're Tyrese Maxey you look at everything that he's done statistically in his three NBA seasons he's clearly emerged as a, as a lead guard on most teams and and he's taken a backseat role as well he's he's been fine coming off the bench he's accepted his role D'Anthony Melton started at different points so what happens with Tyrese Maxey I mean if I'm him I, I might want a max contract this summer <laughs> and so if you're you have James Harden you have Tyrese Maxey you have you have Joel Embiid your Philly, who do you want to distribute your, your money to, your max contracts to? And also, w- what happens this year if they don't, if they fall short of expectations? So there are a lot of questions, but Tyrese Max, these are good problems to have for sure. Eddie, was there anything in the first half that you saw out of Brooklyn that thought, okay, this could work? Because it, it was interesting, at least for a half. Well, Cam Johnson had the best half of his career. <laughs> that, that helps. They're going to need these types of scoring explosions. They struggle so much to score on Philly, which is not the greatest defensive team in the playoffs. Right. And they just struggle to manufacture points, to break down the defense. Look at some of these shots. They're settling for step back, mid-range twos. That's not what you want in the modern NBA. You know, So they're taking difficult shots. They just cannot break down a defense in that way. And when the Sixers went to their matchup zone, they essentially destroyed their offense, got back in the game, took over the lead, never looked back. <laughs> uh, they don't have a guy on the roster who can change that for them. They need, they need a dynamic superstar, and they let a few of them go this year, and maybe they'll go out there one this summer. But I, I love that people are still element. thinking Ben Simmons is the missing piece. Yeah, good luck. I, I, feel, like, I feel like that ship has sailed. Um, is there any chance, any world in which you could see the Nets making some sort of a comeback? Zero percent. You know? Zero point zero. I, I don't see it. I, I think they will adjust a little bit. I think they'll go to Cam Thomas in game three. I think they'll shake up the rotation. Uh, they've already went small. And Royce O'Neal, to his credit, he's doing everything he can. He is banging with Joel Embiid. He is fronting the post. He, they, they're doing all they can. They're just they're shorthanded. They don't have enough depth. They don't have enough size. They don't have enough talent. And like Eddie just said, they, 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 they need another star. And there's a couple guys that maybe will be available this summer that I think could really help this core going forward. But in this series, I, I don't I don't see a chance. This is probably way. my least favorite series, maybe. Feels like it. Yeah. Fast. I didn't. No, well, maybe Nuggets, T-Wolves. That might be my, that might be number one. We could go through that. That's our next segment. It's all about what do we hate? What do we yeah. hate the most? Uh, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, Dame, Bradley Beal, where will they play next? And is there a team that Victor Wembanyama hopes does not get the first pick? <laughs> That's when Run It Back run it returns. Run It Back, Run It Back, Run It Up. Run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. I don't have much of an appetite for building and you know guys two and three years away from really going after it. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I think we we get Shaden at 19, and he's just different. You know what I'm saying? I think he. Just being around him, his disposition, you know what I mean, his how he listens, um, his frame, his natural talent and his ability, I think, you know, that's that's a that's enough nineteen year olds, you know what I'm saying? And you probably won't find one that will come along the way he has. But um, you know, I I'm just not 
I just ain't interested in that, you know, being honest. And this this is not a secret, you know what I mean? I I want a chance to, to go for it. And if the route is to, to do that, then, you know, that's, you know, that's not my route. So Dame is done with teenagers. That's uh, no more 19-year-olds. He's over it, that the, the one's good. But are you buying that he remains a Portland Trailblazer? I am not. I think he's gone, and I think it's it's. I think he should be gone. I think it's to the point now where it's going to be a mutual, you know, breakup going into this, where they understand he deserves better. He proved this year that he can still play at a high level, and he can still, you know, he wants to compete for a championship, and he's made it very, very clear. He's given his all to this city, this organization. He's the best Portland Trailblazer of all time, uh, and I think it's just come to a, of to all a, time. I think so. Whoa. I, and I think it's just be, it's come to an end here where this has all worked out fantastic for him too, where he can leave, you know, hands free, come back to a standing ovation. And <laughs> I even think as much as the fan base there will miss him and want would love to see him back and to, to add other pieces to compete for a championship, they love him so much that they'll they'll be happy for him to find another home and to be able to play a you know, and be able to compete for a championship. And they know that it's not gonna happen in Portland. So I think how it's all worked out, I think he, he's he got the green light to get on up out of there. It confuses me. Dame, really? Dame signed a two year, $122 million extension last summer. Mm. He, he didn't have to do that. I mean, you look, I'm not turning down $122 I was gonna million. Dollars. Say, I'm gonna he didn't have to do that. If he wanted max flexibility, he could have played it out and did all that. He's been doing this for a few years. I understand it. He's he's conflicted. He wants to win a title. He wants to be loyal to Portland. He wants to do all stuff. Whatever he's going to do, I want him to do it. I want him to hurry yeah. up and be done with it, and I want to stop hearing these quotes. I want to stop hearing the exclusive interviews with such and such reporter where he says, yo, I'm locked into Portland, and then he sits on the podium and says, I actually don't want us to draft. And I let's... He, they got Jeremy Grant last year. They, they, they're they usually active in free agency. They get meetings with everybody because they're the Portland Trailblazers, right? They're in state, no state tax, all this great stuff going on for them. They've tried. If he wants to go, go. There's options out there for him. I think a team like the Nets, I think, you know, people always mention the Heat because it's Miami mm -hmm. and, and they have those contracts there that they could get off of and all this great stuff. If he wants out, please ask out. It's happened before, go. Like, let's get it over with. Eddie's over it. I'm over uh, it. I think the big date for the Trailblazers is going to be draft lottery night in mid-May and figuring out exactly where they end up drafting. Do they get the number one overall pick? Do they get two? If they get high up there, that gives you either you, you sell Dame on, on, listen, you get a chance to play Victor, with Victor Wembanyama, or you get a chance to play with Brandon Miller, one of these other young guys. But again, what will his appetite be? So I think get to that point, and I think we'll have more clarity. But I still think even if Portland gets the number one pick, they're still going to be rebuilding, right? They're still yeah. going to they're still not going to be a contender. Still a teenager. So watching that game last <laughs> yeah. night, I can see him perfectly in Brooklyn. I think that would make the most sense. I think he is what they need, and I think that would be the ideal spot if I was named Lillard. Shams, if you're Portland, Ben Simmons contract. That's that's the haul for Damian Lillard. I don't I don't know. I don't I, know. If I get all if you, if you get all the picks, if you get four or five first with Benson, Oof. I mean you got to think about it, right? Don't aggregate that. For guys. thirty don't two year, <laughs> yeah, yeah please, please. We're, we're like spitballing here. This is just like banter. Right. We're spitballing here. Banter. But you know, Damian Lillard is thirty two, gonna be thirty three uh, in July, I believe. Uh, he's he's got four years and two hundred and twenty million dollars on his contract. Pretty good uh, agenting. <laughs> for, 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 for him. For yeah, Lamar side. Jackson, are you listening? 40, Get an agent. $45 million on the book. That's a not A $63 million dollar player option in 25, 26, I think. Good so. good times to be Damian Lillard. Right? right? I think when he's zero, like 37. Zero tears right. for uh, Damian Lillard on that one. Uh, so last week you reported, your Shams, uh, that the Mavs were fined 750 grand for conduct detrimental to the league. Uh, of course, Cuban immediately said he'll he'll double up, <laughs> he'll donate. <laughs> Was the juice worth the squeeze, Eddie? Pocket change. Uh, to keep your draft pick? Yep. A million and a half 100%. to keep, yep. keep your draft pick? Oh yeah. A million percent. Oh yeah. What, what's what's seven fifty for Mark Cuban in basketball revenue? Like four dollars. Like, gas money. That's like me handing you like like five bucks. <laughs> yeah. For my for my troubles. Uh, yeah. That's absolutely worth it. Keep your pick. It's fine. It's right. Like it's just weird because teams were doing this all year long. Like the teams. But they weren't like, blatant. Had, like this it was blatant last, towards the end to of last the season. Day, like, and there was the reports how they weren't trying to give up their pick to the Knicks for right. the Porzingis deal, but. 
Yeah, what's seven fifty to a billionaire? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> nothing. I we did think it was a. We talked about it the Monday of that week that there's a chance that they could shut these guys down. I think honestly they might have waited a little bit too yeah. long, and, and then like we talked about it on Monday on this show, they did they waited until Friday to do it. So you have a whole week, mm. you have a whole build up, and then the way that they did it, you know, sitting Kai. And then having Luca play the first quarter and then pulling him after the first quarter, like just the optics of it. Um, you know, some, somewhere on the Mavs told me, you know, if you're going to go this route, like OKC did at one point, or like this year San Antonio did, we saw Charlotte, a few, a few Portland, a few of these other, te- few of these <laughs> other teams did. You don't talk about it publicly, you don't make a big thing about it. And, you know, that, that's really where, where it got led. Also, led to plan to just play one quarter. That was right. Is, it, it optically Just, just let them play one yeah, quarter. It was Not like even, a sham. Why even say that? It, yeah. was a, it was an ugly final week of the season, and they put their exclamation point there. Like, <laughs> you guys tanking? <laughs> we're tanking. Yeah, we're, like, we're legitimately <laughs> doing it, and you're going to see it all happen. Uh, one of the other things Sham's telling us about is that the, the coaching changes, potential coaching changes anyways, and that one of the candidates for the open Rockets job, perhaps Raptors' Nick Nurse, Chandler, are you? He's you're got Nick his own Nurse. Hat with the logo I, too. I, I actually yeah. love his logo. It's pretty good. Who, whose logo is better, his or Dame's? I like the Dame. Dame's Dollar. is pretty good yeah. too. Dame Dollar. And, is and cool. this one kind of looks like noon. Just whatever that like, stuff just is. Looks like an M. Is, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, see, I see, I see two N's. I see a lowercase M. Okay, is this, so there you go. Is this a Nike hat? Like is this a Warshak test? For, you also didn't see the yank. Okay, you know what? Don't bring me back to that. A coach with a logo. A coach with a logo is kind of sick. Like, why does? So you like it? In New York or LA? Should he be in Houston? Are you leaving Toronto for Houston? He wants to be in New York or LA. If you got a yeah, if he got a logo, I'm only reason I'm leaving that for that is if I think I'm getting fired or if there's something, if there's a change coming. But like, no, I'm not leaving this. The team, the Toronto's a better team. They have just as good of a core. I'm not sold on the Kevin Porter, Jalen Green, Jabari Smith, that 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 cast. Yeah. Uh, So no, I don't think so unless. It's a, it's a kind of a backhand discussion that, hey, we're going to make a change, let you, let him go kind of look and, and take a different job. But if I'm looking at the Raptors roster and their future and the Rockets, I'm going Toronto 10 times out of 10. Yeah, the, he knows something about what's going on right. in Toronto yeah. that we don't know. He knows the fire sales coming or whatever. Uh, I don't look at the Rockets and think this is some great gig unless they get number one overall. But they do have a ton of cap space, a ton of ability to move and add pieces. And look, this is one of those jobs where you know when you sign it, it comes with some security. This is a long haul overturn. And maybe mm-hmm. that's what he's looking for right now. A lot of stress out there in Toronto, it seems like. And it just seems like that team's on the cusp of just like, let's start over. <laughs> let's, let's do it It does all again. feel like that, right? Yeah. And it can't be a coincidence that every trade deadline, I feel like they are in it and then they're not. And that just feels unsteady, I think, if you're in that. But as we look at the draft, Victor Wembanyama, the name that we will all grow to love saying out loud, uh, he recently said that he's fine with whichever team takes him, Eddie. You buying that? Yeah, because it's going to make a lot of money. <laughs> so <laughs> come over here and get your get your coins, my friend. Uh, his options are pretty great. I mean, his options, you can play with Pop. You can play in Houston, which is a great city for various reasons. Detroit has a nice future going forward. Orlando, they're, they're mm. getting stacked with young guys. Or you can't beat Florida. I even, can't. Even North can Florida. Be, what? But, uh, One of the worst places I in think the world. His, I think his options are great. <laughs> Literally where I'm from. I know. That's partly why I don't like it. Look at, look at, but, look at what we get from the <laughs> yeah. Come on. But also no state tax. I'll give you that. Yeah. yeah but look, Minnesota's not in the running. Uh, Utah's not in the running anymore. I think, you know, keep him out the snow. He'll be happy. There's no way... Look, he's never going to say it. I don't, I'm not trying to put this kid on the spot, but there are places you'd rather go. And you, of all people, yeah. know <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> I, I went to Memphis, okay, for, for money and for a long-term deal. So if you can, if I can go to Memphis, here's the thing. It's not, it's not free agency. This kid, he doesn't have a choice, right? So, no. you, yeah, you're looking at it, and if I can see, okay, Houston is a way better city than Detroit, and you look at, but for him, I think he's looking at more, you know, roster and talent and who he can play with. Uh, but yeah, city help. This is where he's gonna, you know, meet his wife, have kids. It's wow. all that, all that goes into. He's it, like you know seven I mean? years old. Why are you putting all that on him? I am just saying this is gonna be his home. And yeah, if I had a choice, I don't want to live in Detroit, Michigan. Man, can, I just, I all I wanted was for yeah. Chandler to call out a city, and we got our wish. He yeah, did, he, he didn't call out San Antonio. Well, Not yet. That goes no, we got Barkley for that. Yeah. So, so don't worry, there are enough people doing that. Uh, and then you know what? Congratulations. I, 
Shame on me. I should have started the show with a big congratulations to Jaron Jackson Jr., who was officially announced as Defensive Player of the Year winner. Um, you buying that he deserved it, Eddie? Over I, everybody? I, I don't know if we need to congratulate him on that. What? They might have patted the block. I, 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 I feel <laughs> like it was determined at some point. He's a massive impact on defense. Like, let me not make it sound like he was deserving. I do kind of wince a little bit at the amount of games he's missed and the minutes he's behind the other contenders. And I don't know, this feels like an award that was decided a few months back Perhaps. and after we had our controversy about the scorekeeping and all this stuff. <laughs> and congrats to him. I personally think perimeter players need to win defensive player of the year a little more. It seems like we're almost deciding, like, who's going to have the most blocks? Okay, he's won the award. Cool, let's move on. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's he deserves it because I don't think anyone else kind of blew him out of the water, right? It was, and he was he's he has he led the NBA in blocks, and again, the whole thing about the stat padding, who knows if there's any truth to that? Who knows if it really happens? But who listen, knows? he's we need you to go down to Memphis. And yeah, we need an inside. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm busy that we, weekend. We need you to make a return. <laughs> <laughs> Your, your, your name's still good down there? Well, you're walking you there oh, no, I, got, I got engaged with that weekend. I cannot <laughs> make that. <laughs> the worst person of all time. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, but that man has a family when we return. And maybe an update. What? Hey. Well, that's a tease right there, baby. Hey. Okay, that's like good. Uh, that's a pretty good poster. Run it back, yeah, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. Run it back, run it up, 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 run it back. I love an organic tease as we go to break, and Shams, that's exactly what you did for us. Go. So John Morant suffered a hand injury in game one, and he underwent an x-ray that, that day on Sunday. He underwent further testing, further evaluation on Monday. I'm told there are no breaks, no fractures in John Morant's hand. It's, as of right now, being treated more as a pain tolerance Ooh. injury, something that they're going to continue to monitor today. It's clearly it, severe enough to the point and painful enough to where John Morant said the other night he felt it was a 10 out of 10 mm. when it comes to pain. So his status is still very much up in the air for game two. On Wednesday, the Grizzlies won't have to update his status until later today. I think they'll take their time. It's the playoffs. Everyone wants to have an advantage. They're going to keep it close to the vest. But John Morant, if, if it is truly a situation where it's a pain tolerance thing, he did say the other day, I'm going to do the best I can to play if I'm able to get out there. But if I feel like I'm hurting my team. I also mm. am understanding of that. Oh, mm. This is a guy who thought a pass to his head from a 17-year-old's career threatening. So when he says that the pain tolerance is a 10 out of 10, I'm going to take it serious. It's a playoff game. This, and this, this is good news if there's actually not anything serious here because this looked bad. It looked crazy. Bad. Like, yeah. this, this looked like it hurt. And again, it is the playoffs. These are the type of injuries that if it isn't nothing structurally wrong, you got to find a way to play through it. But good thing for them, Tyus Jones has always stepped up every time John Rance goes, uh, sure. goes out. So I don't think this series is over for Memphis if, if he's out. But, yeah, this looked, this looked gross. But if you're super self-aware, too, and you're John Morant, you realize you've already sort of put your team in a bad position for things that you've done. So this is If there's any chance you can play, added. you're playing. Yeah, you, you have to, to be out there. Um, at least they get an extra day off, too, in between. Uh, that man has a family, and a lot of men have families, and sometimes they're on the receiving end of awful, awful moments <laughs> that we now get to enjoy. Yay, Camp Johnson. This. This was just uncharacteristic. Climb the ladder. This was, yeah, this kid had a game. <laughs> That's fun. Chandler, do you have, like, game photos in your house somewhere where you're just, like, this Just dunking game? on people? I, I do. In your this office? Is, I do. This is one yes. I'd put up. In my office, in my bedroom, oh, restrooms, geez. everywhere. <laughs> the rest <laughs> Every bathroom He's got him in the house. bathroom. So, like, He's got him in the shower. <laughs> everywhere. Oh, nice. A reminder. Yes. Just <laughs> this is old. one I'd put up. This is yeah. one. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, that one's not bad. No, not of other people. Any of me. Oh, my bad. I know. I thought we were on the same thing. Eddie, what are you talking about? What is I'm putting my poster. Hey, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> oh, you're putting other people. Oh, no, I was it's Chandler. Just glamour I thought it was. You yeah, the court? just glamour shots. You in the 25? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's what I thought we meant. Oh, but Embiid was not so fast. A little revenge, my friend. Mm. I do like you can quickly turn around and get revenge. Don't I you? like that. <laughs> I like that, Joel. That was a little mean. Look, look, like shout out to James. Foul, but, yeah. Shout out to James for the point of attack defense here. Look at the jog. Look at, uh, uh. Whee! Boom. I like to it. Tyrese Max after the game saying even though he's getting double teamed, he's he's our catalyst defensively for all the haters saying he takes plays off. Not on this one. <laughs> a little, little, oh, here a little we go. bit of playoff there, but I get it. <laughs> this was some vintage stuff right here, yeah, this LeBron. Was, yo, what, what was Desmond Bain thinking? He's going one on five. <laughs> he's going one on four, and then LeBron's back there somewhere. Like, 
think think a little better, buddy. It's crazy to me how often he still gets these yeah. blocks. Because yeah. you know if he's anywhere in the arena, he's doing this. Yes. Yeah. I think we'll know when LeBron is on the downside, like the real, real downside, when he doesn't do this. <laughs> the thing. real, when will that be, Sean? He, he like, let Anthony Good Edwards Lord. get a, He let Anthony, he was just behind Anthony Edwards, let him get a dunk uh, in the playing game. I was blown away. I was, I was like, I just knew he was going to block it. I was shocked. So, I'm with you. You got to either dunk that or go on the other side. How about this moment? Oh, Bones Highland. Mm. Big dream. That's nice. That's not offhand block. Like, what was Bones thinking? Was Bones going to dunk that? Well, I think no, he had big dreams. I think he changed his mind halfway through. Look how far he jumped from. He, he realized he has no chance, and it made Devin look really good defensively <laughs> here. Devin, not exactly a little leaper. Gave him the flex. A little flex, too. Good Told leaper. him about it. I Goodness. like this. I like this one. Yo, are they in what was, trouble? Was Bones trying to dunk that, though? That's what I, I said. Think he, um, I was yeah. good to make up for your bad turnover. Bulldoze. Well, that was Oof. a little rude, wasn't it? You know what? I can watch Aaron Gordon dunk every day. Charge. He's such a beautiful. Yeah, but player. I don't like to see Mike Conley down on the ground. Charge. That's either. true. Not, you know? yeah. not at Mike Conley's expense. Yeah, exactly. Not at not at Conley's expense. I don't know. <laughs> that, that, you gotta you gotta play firm defense there. Get him back in the How dunk. Dare contest, you? Though. That's kind of uh, sick. Yeah. We do need Aaron Gordon back in the dunk contest. I bet his plea though to maybe an All Star to get the dunk contest that didn't work. Huh? <laughs> God, he tried. Right. It. He tried. That was brilliant. You gotta try negotiation. Paul Reed. What? Oh. oh. Uh -oh. Like a young uh, Chandler. Uh oh! <laughs> uh oh! So that was nice. Though. Paul, bad. Look Paul at Reed. Whoop. Paul Reed will play like 14 minutes and have like eight, seven, six, and four. He is productive in, in, in his short minutes. I will say that. And Montrezl Harrell still over there? He's, he's playing over him. Paul Reed is over Paul Montrezl Reed. Harrell in, right. in the rotation. Yes. Should Paul be. Reed is like one of the most plain names I've ever heard in my whole life. Oh. Just Paul Reed. Keep his game is like not this, plain. Yeah. I'll tell you no. that. No. He'll, he'll put in like three. You know. Three turnovers, eight points, seven mm. rebounds, six mm. assists. I mean, this little four mm. montage is lovely. Oh, I thought we had more. We don't even have more? Oh, what a tease. That's Throw too some bad. Chandler highlights. Let's yeah. see what they yeah, say. Yeah, Give the people what they want. We've got a, <laughs> do we have a do we have an old school Chandler dunk? Somewhere? I bet we do. Funny we got a you should ask. triple header tonight though of playoff <laughs> games. <laughs> we'll break them down. Yeah, that's true. Good luck. You do. Good luck him. getting that tray. Run it back, run it Some series are more exciting than others, but we've got three games tonight. Mm -hmm. We'll start with Celtics Hawks. I'm gonna try to put some. You know what? I, it's not my job to sell this series. I think this series sucks, but we're gonna watch it anyway. Uh, Celtics lead it one nothing. Trey Young's future with the Hawks is it? It depends maybe on this. We we seem to think it does. Expectations challenge. And by the way. There was a time where I had to be nice. I didn't well, have to be nice anymore. Yeah. I don't think it's fair to put this series that they really don't have a chance on, right. on Trey Young's future. Agreed. I do think they want to see how he handles it. I want to see how, you know, how he can play in this series, if he can make it competitive, because they do have the talent, the offense to do it. They have the new coach. They have everything moving forward. And now it's just up in the air what Trey Young's future is. But to say that his future is based on this series against arguably the best team in the NBA is tough because that's a tall mountain they got to climb and no one's given them a chance to win this series. So that's a little unfair, but I would like to see them go in and make it competitive right. at least. I Be like, that team. I like you sticking up for Trey. Um, NBA did the right thing. Put this on NBA TV. Yes. Let me watch Knicks and Cavs and let me watch the real games after this. Congrats to the Hawks for a great season and a new coach. Great and season. All this stuff. <laughs> wow, we're done. But you know what though? Plus 10 and a half. It. Give me the Hawks tonight. Really? Oh, they're not oh. losing. They're not losing by 11 or more. Sure they are. Mail it in. Did you see the other Book game? It. I did not. It was awful. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I did. Have they played yet? Huh. Okay, fair Thought enough. it was game one. <laughs> 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 that would be amazing if that just happened. Yeah, ten. I feel like ten and a half is probably. I would take that one. If this was our Friday, I wouldn't be watching this game. But we have a show tomorrow. If I'll pay attention. Was, That's fair. God, there's too much honesty in this segment, guys. Let's move. <laughs> let's keep it moving. Uh, <laughs> Knicks. Cal okay, now we're back to games that we care about. Knicks. Cavs. This one's a little more exciting with the Knicks stealing one in Cleveland. They also play later tonight. I mean, look, Cavs. You have to win tonight, right? It's simple. They do, and this is probably the most even, most competitive series, and, and I, I, the Knicks look good. Jalen Brunson was great down the stretch here, but this is a must win. You do not want to go to the Garden down 0-2-0, or down 2-0, and they have to find a way to win here. They have to find a way to get this season, uh, this back, uh, this series back tied. And winning game one is one thing, but as soon as the other team wins game two, it is, it's, it's, it, Game one is just a pass, just a memory. So this is huge for Cleveland just to get this back, even it up, and go in the garden with it all tied up. I'm with Chandler. I think this is the best series, my favorite series. Mm. Um, I'm enjoying Kings-Warriors as well, but obviously that's 2-0. It's a little different. I think this is the most competitive series. 
Uh, and yeah, it's absolute must win. I think we saw all of the Cavs warts in game one. They're going to persist throughout the series. It's how do they get through that. And uh, I don't know. I might try to make it out there to game three. I might try to. Oh, I think so. Try right? to pull some garden strings, some uh -oh. fan duel strings. Uh -oh. Somebody get me in the building. I got to. No, I'm, uh -oh. I'm with you. I think that's my plan too. Is I'm, I'm getting to one of these games at the Garden at some point. I mean, Julius Randle, like, obviously they needed him back. They're happy to have him back. As far as his importance to his team, and Josh Hart is what questionable. Josh still? Hart is doubtful. Doubtful for tonight. For that's, tonight. that's a big. Key, so that's a bummer. That's a key piece of this team. So. That's a major factor, but for Cleveland, yeah. I want to see I want I want to see Darius Garland have a bigger role tonight because for sure. when he has the ball in his hands, playmaking, this team is a lot better. Emmanuel quickly can play a better game. Uh, Quentin Grimes can play a better game. I, it hurts to lose Josh Hart, but there's other yeah. guys who can step up if he's out, and mm -hmm. uh, that's tough. That's tough for them. Our our favorite guy from that first game, right, Michelle? We we, we enjoyed everything. He I did. mean, he's he's just. I don't want to say the heart because I get it, but it's, he really is. Like, it's just the guy that kind of comes out there and has the emotions and everything. But he'll be there, and their, their, bench, is, their bench is good. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of what the Knicks are doing. I, right I can just see Tom Thibodeau putting his arm around. Right? Like, he, he can just tell. He and just almost smiling. Yeah, almost. almost. Almost smiling. Uh, and the other game, another one that we, we really do care about, is Clippers' Suns. Okay. This one, Chandler... The fact that the Clippers stole game one against a team that so many people have the highest of hopes for, how shocked were you? I was very shocked, but I, I got to give Russ his flowers. He made such big plays. This play right here defensively mm. is unbelievable. You're guarding arguably one of the hardest guys in the ISO to guard. You've managed to block the shot and still deflect it off him. Uh, this was huge, and he made a lot of these plays down the stretch. He's rebounding the ball. He's getting out in transition, and Kawhi Leonard, Oof. He, he looks unbelievable. He looks back to his, his old self. He's strong. He's getting to his spots. He's efficient. He's getting to the foul line. He's been he's the best player in this series right now, and, and the Suns have to find a way to maintain him. The bad news is Scott Foster's Stop. Here we go. been given this assignment. Yeah. Uh, Chris Paul has lost 14 straight. 14 oh, well. straight. Oh, and 14 in the playoffs. Um, yeah, I mean the most out in in our eyes collusion that could possibly be in the league. Is this not a coincidence then? What do we think? I so I look. 14's tough to overlook. Like that's 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 crazy. I wonder if there's that's another player with that many games with the same ref where it's that big of a despair. Ooh, Sh a Shams is always the sensible one here, so maybe he just <laughs> this. But this is such a gigantic discrepancy, and there's so much commotion about this very situation. Scott Foster, yeah, and Scott Foster and Chris Paul. The league has to be aware. How many in a row? 14. 14. 14. Straight. The 14. league has to be aware. Chris and, and Paul is 0-14 in the playoffs with yeah. Scott Foster refing his game. What do you think Chris Paul's household is talking about right now? Scott Foster. Scott Foster. <laughs> like, this is crazy. Like, they woke up this morning, he's like, yeah. The last 14. I mean, it doesn't, it, it, you know. Doesn't look good? It doesn't look good. The streak, the streak ends tonight. Give me, give me, give me the Suns. The oh, you got Suns? Tonight. I got Suns. You've got Hawks and Suns tonight. No, I got the Hawks no, it's not 10 and losing a by, yeah, covering the spread. Man, I got the Suns. Go all in. I got the Suns. Go all in. I got the Suns, <laughs> got the Suns Just winning money line this it. game. Yeah, yeah, no. You really, you think the Suns, I mean, is there enough from the other I game? I do. That... I think they're the better team. I think even Tory, guys like Torrey Craig, they stepped up. They played well. They just have to find a way defensively to kind of limit Kawhi Leonard. He, you can't let him go and have 40 points. That's tough <laughs> to guard. But, yeah, I think this is what makes <laughs> Phoenix so scary is the, their <laughs> offensive firepower. And they still got, I think, what, a, Torrey Craig had 20-something points. That, that, that's huge for them. So they found that fifth guy. Now they got to find other ways to just, you know, defend play harder, play tougher, but offensively, they're, they're scary, and and it's, it's going to come down the other end of the court. I think there's some simple adjustments they can make. Uh, Monty Williams has been kind of open about, yo, let's get Kevin Durant the ball more. Let's, yes. Let's run Please. a little bit of offense through them. They have not shown that thus far in his tenure. He's only played nine games, but yeah, that would make a huge difference. You, you can't have him just have one shot down the stretch of a game. Um, so there's things they can do, and, and you would ideally defend Kawhi Leonard a little <laughs> better. Eric Gordon doesn't go crazy in the first quarter of the game. Uh, there, there's things that can change, and, and I still think they're the better team, but they absolutely have a challenge for them. And Kawhi, he might just be the best player alive right now. He might just I mean, be the best playoff. It's not silly. Guy right now. He looks incredible. By the way, I'm surprised it's eight and a half points. Sun's favorite, like that's because it's kind of the same as the other series. It's a must win. You right, but cannot. after the first game, you think that would be a little different. The, they're they're gonna play to the home court. They're gonna want to entice you a little bit, they're gonna add a little bit on the top. It. So you, you gotta take that. But Taking close. I'm expecting six close games. I, I don't think these teams can get away from each other. I don't think Vegas knew that Scott Foster was ref in this game. Dude, Scott Foster is somewhere <laughs> right now just 
eating us raw steak for <laughs> breakfast. He's I've been ready playing pickleball on game day. Uh, this is really. He's a big pickleball guy. Yeah. Oh. So nerdy. See, That's I mean, not Chris as cool. Chris would play pickleball and kind of like him a little bit more. Settle the old <laughs> scores. Yeah. That would be amazing if they did that. That's gonna do it for us today. We will be back here live from Los Angeles tomorrow morning, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Three games. Two good ones. <laughs> Enjoy it. Run it back, run it up, 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 and run it back, run it back, run it up, and run it back, yeah, yeah.